Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Championships, checking in with 6424 Stealth Panther Robotics, a phenomenal team, regional win this year, and a first impact in War II, so congratulations and awesome success for that. Take a look at 6424's robot, a lot of great stuff to go through in here. We're we'll talking about different iterations, processes this team has had, but I really just like the overall packaging that this team brings. And of course, bringing in the whole uh, B2 thing on the robot, I really love that as well. Great stuff for that. We'll be following that full note, note journey through, starting with their shooter, going into their intake, all the way through. Talking about some of their great wire management and how they're actually doing soldering for everything versus different connectors. So can't wait to hear more about that. So let's learn more about Cell Path through Robotics coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Alex, just start off with your shooter, talking about the Integra piece that this is. You've got a lot of great stuff looking into this, how this is organized and stuff. Your team's been doing such a great job with your speaker shots. Tell me more about it. Yeah. So early on in the build season, we decided that our goal was to have a very strong, simple, robust robot. With that, we wanted to be a great companion bot, so we wanted to be able to score in the amp very well. Early on, we saw a RI3D team test using a churro held up to the amp gate, and we thought that was a wild idea and would never work. And then week two of build season, we tested that idea and it worked beautifully. So on our robot we have here, we call it our mousetrap bar, but it's an amp bar, it raises up, pneumatically, which is very rare nowadays, and it is used to actuate our shooter as well. Whenever the rings come out of the shooter, they fly up and hit the amp bar. At the top of the amp bar, there's this piece of Velcro here. This Velcro does a good job at slowing down the ring through its journey. Then with our shooter, having these linkages here took a lot of prototyping and testing, um, but we used a laser cutter and quarter inch plywood and several iterations to figure out our perfect two angles. So our upper angle is only used for scoring in the amp and for scoring on contact with the subwoofer. And our lower angle here is used to score from the podium range. Uh, we identified that range was best due to the geometry of the speaker, the widest range and the uh, protected zone at the podium. We use the limelight here for guidance for our shooter to allow us to shoot from any of the three spike mark locations or anywhere that fits that arc. Our shooter here for stability is just uh, wheels on one side. We went with uh, four Andy Mark squish wheels on each side. These have worked beautifully for us. With a little bit of testing, we initially had a shooter with horizontal wheels, but we identified that there was not enough power. So we changed to these uh, high grip, or not high grips, these compliant wheels uh, on horizontal axes, and they work perfectly. I want to go back a little bit and talk about this uh, linkage that you have on here. When you're Analyzing and you said, you know, that those two positions worked out well for you looking in the championships Are you still happy going that route so far because our team team we might see like a sector gear or something like that on it But your team has been doing great. I think having these two positions so far. So coming in the championships Are you still happy you went this route? Uh, we're very happy with it We've seen lots of great robots here that have variable angle shooters and have managed to make them successful but due to our goal of being a very reliable and robust robot for playoffs, we liked the simplicity of this. Oh, I think it's really cool. I love to see integration for that. Anytime you can integrate multiple areas, I think it's a really cool thing. And just, you mentioned the simplicity of it. And I think that really speaks true to what that is as well, too. So let's pass over to Braden, talk more about the uh, intake, what, what you're running, you have the under the bumper intake for it. And then afterwards, if we can see a note come in and kind of uh, analyze how that travels through your robot, it would be phenomenal. Yeah, so this is our this is our intake. We have vertical and then we have the horizontal. So the vertical is two 775 motors that have a stack of three squish wheels to help intake the note. And we felt that being against the wall was gonna be a really big, not problem, but it's gonna be something that we have to work around. So that's why we have, we have the verticals so that the ring can suck in. It goes from being a foot, foot gap to being a three foot gap of intaking for the uh, ring. And then we have the horizontal, which is two, two sets of squish wheels. So that when it goes through the vertical, it sucks up into the horizontal. And then a beam brake in the front of our robot and the shooter 
stops it and keeps it from advancing too far and getting misfired. And then we have the back feeding. So that right when, right when the ring reaches too far in, right before it shoots, it back feeds a certain set distance that is locked by the beam brake so that we no, don't run into misfires because that's, that's a big problem that we have ran into, but we fixed it. And then, oh, this is a uh, two by two, two inch by two inch aluminum thick wall because we felt that that side was gonna be a battering ram because with the intake, that's the brunt force of everything. So we charged with that. And this year was a really heavy hitting year. So we saw that a lot of teams were getting bent frames and destroyed metal all over due to just heavy hits. So that's why we lead with our back and we have suffered minor dents in that metal, but it's not been replaced at all this year and it's still perfectly fine and good to go. Yeah, it's great you mentioned that because you're right. So many teams we talked to have taken so much damage this year and they either had to completely replace drive frames, go with the bigger thickness, that sort of thing. Glad to see that you thought about that as well. Can we put a note in and take a look at how that travels yeah. through your robot? So, so as you can see, it sucked up right through and stopped right at the beam brake, which is located right here. And so these are green. If he hits intake, you'll say that this is green to show that it is done intaking and it doesn't need to go anymore. And then right when we hit any of our shoot buttons, it will back feed a set distance so that we can shoot correctly. So that's it. That's it back feeding the set distance that we chose. Can we see what an amp shot looks like? Can we put that yeah, bar up and take a look? Very cool, Matt. Let's talk more about your uh, climber as well, too. I really, this is a very interesting config for this uh, that you're running. Uh, your team's been great at harmonizing as well, too, and going that route. It's something I really like to hear about, too, is we, when we were talking earlier, uh, Caleb, is that your team chose to forego the trap as well, too. So I'd love to hear about just in general, like why that was the best route for your team. So we can start by talking about the climber. To me, the climber is my favorite part about the robot because really, I like, uh, shows the ideals of our team. It's very simple and robust, and once we made it, it's been indestructible. We, it sits very comfortably in the bottom of our robot powered by Falcon 500 with a 101 gear ratio. Uh, and it's pocketed out two by one. And that Falcon 500 drives a set of chain uh, uh, grabbed by two dog bones that drive the climber up and down. These hooks right here are uh, on both sides have these notched out uh, smaller hooks going along the climber which allows us to harmonize very easily and fast with our teammates. In fact, later, earlier today, we had a match where we had five seconds left. We we're sitting at the amp shooting uh, scoring. We went back around to the far side of the stage and climbed with two seconds left, and it was perfectly fine all the way up. Later, uh, you asked about why we chose not to trap. While we were doing our think tank in the beginning of the year, we decided that the trap with five points uh, it gave was very beneficial for ranking points during quals, but wasn't the extra push we needed in playoffs because we decided it'd be more effective to go for more cycles. So we decided to keep our robot simple and robust by uh, nixing the trap and going for this design instead, which I think has proven to be very beneficial to us as we have all of our parts are modular and easy to replace. And thankfully, even though they are easy to replace, we haven't actually had to touch the climber once we put it into the robot because it hasn't broken once. Do you mind, can we deploy your climber and just kind of narrate what's happening in your climber sequence? Yeah. So right now the climber is in its resting position and it's hitting the bottom two green bricks. But when Drew hits the button for it to go up, these uh, 3D printed uh, tabs right here, they ride up the chain until they hit these two limit switches. Uh, these two limit switches are our fail safe so the climber doesn't eat itself. Uh, it's powered by a very strong motor, and in uh, testing, we found that it actually ripped apart the control panel because uh, we didn't have proper uh, fail safes in place. Obviously, it's all fixed now for playoffs and worlds, but that was a very uh, fun week of testing. Uh, besides that, we have these on this side, this uh, piece of metal right here. This is made to reinforce the climber instead of it just being these two screws, which has helped us, again, uh, not break ever since our first uh, regional uh, test. 
A lot of great thought processes have gone into this robot. Uh, definitely great from the mechanical side, but we can talk uh, a couple of the other aspects. So one of the things we were talking earlier is how proud you are of your wire management, going uh, a, a solder route for everything, which I think is really cool versus connectors as well. Uh, so Drew, let's talk more about that. And we'll go a little bit more into uh, how some of the programming works, especially with your dashboard here too. Yeah, so we, uh, we've we seen it, everyone's seen it, the uh, robots that die on the field because they have a loose connection yeah. and we've been it before and we decided that that's not something we wanted to do this year. So first what we did was we put all of our electronics behind this uh, piece of like sand. That way if a robot comes slamming into us, they hit this and not our all of our Rios and PDH and stuff. Um, but for accessibility and troubleshooting, we can actually take this off with these little thumb screws. Uh, if I could get someone to help me with that real quick. And so we uh, we do this because if something were to break or wiggle loose, um, we can just access it really easily, be back on the field before we miss a match. To try to mitigate that, we do hot glue all of our ports. That way they can't wiggle themselves out if they're getting hit big. And like uh, Braden was saying, we have this on the front to take big hits, but if we take a big hit and wires wiggle out, then it might as well not be there. So we make sure that all of our wires are good and strong and we're not gonna shut down during a match. If we need to access the back side of this where all the wires go to their selected parts, we can actually lift forward the control panel on a hinge and that gives us access to all of our wire runs. Um, and we have control maps to know which wire is what and what it goes to. So if we break something, we can just wiggle it up. Um, we do solder our connections though and that just prevents more of that wiggling out during big hits. Can't really break a solder joint unless it's good. Um, and that just keeps us from breaking. Also with our Falcons, or Krakens, sorry, we uh, have the hot swaps this year where we can just pop them off and put in a new Kraken and use the same exact wires we were using for the last one. So if it's not the wiring being an issue, we're also good on the motor front. I'm glad here it's worked out so well uh, for you so far. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what your dashboard has on here. Walk me through uh, how you're operating your robot during a match. Yeah, so on the software side of things, um, we obviously test all of our shots until we get them into a golden zone, but things change. Uh, fields can be a little bit off or our robot can just be a little bit off. So we try to put adjustability in all of our shots. All of our shots have a top and bottom wheel speed so that way we can put a differential on it and make sure it goes a little bit up or a little bit down um, we have climber speeds um, every motor has a speed control on the front panel that way if we need to go slower or faster we're good if something happens with the climber we need to be a little bit more careful we can slow that down just a tiny bit for the drivers we also with our shuttle angle um, so on our shuttle shot we don't use a April tag to line up we use our gyro um, to line up our shot. And just to make sure that that angle is good, if it ever changes, we have both angles for red and blue side on our front panel. We also have indicators for our limit switches on our climbers, whether we have a note or not, just like those LEDs on the robot that will light up green. And we can see our wheel angles to make sure that everything's acting how it's supposed to. Well, Salt Panther Robotics, congratulations for its off on a great season so far. We can't wait to see how you do here in your division, but regardless, this is a phenomenal robot. I'm sure you're all very proud of it. I can't wait to see what your team continues to do. This is definitely a team to look out for in future seasons, so keep an eye out for them. So thanks a lot for telling us more about your team and good luck here at Championships. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.